Today's episode is called Ambition with No Limit. What does it mean to be an ambitious woman or an ambitious person? To me, ambition means you're hungry for more, more for yourself, more for your family, more for the world. You're not satisfied with the status quo. You wanna be better and do better. You wanna contribute something powerful to society. And it means you're never satisfied with just coasting along or being stagnant. You're not complacent. You're always reaching for that next level, financially, emotionally, in all ways. You wanna just keep rising. I believe you can be grateful and ambitious at the same time. You can celebrate your success. You can count your blessings. You can feel super grateful for everything you've got. And at the same time, you can ask, okay, what's next? You can be grateful and want more at the same time. It's not one or the other, it's both and. On today's show, you're gonna meet my friend Rachel. She's a mother of four kids, an activist, a leader, and a self-made millionaire. She is unapologetically ambitious, and she's got some advice for you. Oh, hey, I'm Susan Hyatt, and this is Go Time TV, and welcome to, for the love of Get your ass back in the RV. Welcome to the Road Trip Edition. I've hit the road. We're going to a lot of my favorite places to talk to some of my favorite people along the way. Right now, we're in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Delaware. New York. Now we're in North Carolina. This show is all about getting more of whatever you want. More confidence, more success, more wind, more wealth, or maybe more adventure. Whatever you want, I want to help you get it. No waiting, no procrastinating, no excuses. It's go time! <laughs> Hi guys, we're sitting at the Red Lion Inn and I have such a full circle moment story about this. When Scott and I were first married, we lived in upstate New York and we had purchased a home and were broke, uh, house poor, living paycheck to paycheck. And we would take day trips because we couldn't afford to stay anywhere overnight. And one of the places we took uh, a day trip to was Stockbridge, Massachusetts, Lenox, Massachusetts, Great Barrington, the Berkshires. And um, we came to eat lunch at the Red Lion Inn and I really wanted to stay overnight. And I think we only had enough money in our bank account for lunch and gas to get home. And so Scott was like, we, we can't afford to stay here. And so I sat in the rockers on the front porch and watched people come and go and thought, what would it be like to have enough money to stay wherever I wanted overnight, stay in this beautiful hotel overnight, shop in their gift shop, shop in all the cute shops on the main street, Anyway, it's, it stuck with me. And then when I was deciding, because of COVID-19, to take an RV trip, um, my friend Robert Hartwell hit international news with the White House that he purchased. And I was Google mapping where it was because I decided I'm gonna go see Robert's house. I'm gonna bring Go Time TV and we're gonna go interview Robert about this amazing story. So proud of him. And when I Google mapped hotels nearby, I saw on the map the Red Lion Inn, what? And I thought that can't be the same Red Lion Inn. And sure enough, it was. It's only an hour and a half from where we lived in upstate New York. And I just had to laugh because it was like God or the universe was winking at me because coming back to the Red Lion Inn, not only could I afford to stay here, but I brought a class A RV with my hair and makeup artists, my photographer, my full-time videographer, my personal assistant, and my husband. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, like I did it. I created a life where I could stay wherever I want and it feels really good. And so we, I made the team come by the Red Lion Inn. Uh, we had a few meals here. I did stay here one night. Um, and 
I'm just really proud of the vision and the hard work that that this team has helped me create. So don't give up on your dreams. You might be broke ass <laughs> right now, but you can change your reality. It's time for the question of the day. This is the part of the show where I share a question for you. Yes, you, the beautiful person who's watching right now. Here's our question of the day. It's a two part question. What's something you crave? And what are you gonna do about it? Post your answer down below in the comments. I wanna see your ambition and your plan. Wow. This is so awesome. Let's start with one of my favorite questions, which is, what's something that's free or almost free that makes you feel rich? Ooh, free or almost free that makes me feel rich. Uh, time in the morning. Yes. Time in the morning, not hustling. Not. Mm -hmm. I don't set an alarm. Mm -hmm. uh, I get up when I want yep. most days. Yep. Uh, I don't, I try not to have appointments first thing in the morning. Yep. And then I sit and I have a long, luxurious breakfast with mm -hmm. my family. Mm -hmm. That makes me feel rich. Aww. So you're not like throwing Cheerios at people. <laughs> exactly. and, like, <laughs> eat, your, eat your granola bar in the car. <laughs> we gotta go. That was me when I was a realtor. Yes. For shizzle. Like all that hustle. Even, you know, when like regular school was in session, we put them on the bus. Yeah. We were like, oh, the bus is coming. Off you go. <laughs> time wealth, time wealth for sure. Time wealth, yes. Makes me feel rich. Exactly. I was gonna say, I was gonna answer for you and say me, but I'm not free. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're an expensive bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing free about this night. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> this episode is all about ambition. Mmm. And. What does the word ambition mean to you? Um, <laughs> can I curse? <laughs> can she curse? What show you think you on? Because <laughs> what comes to mind is the phrase, fuck you, pay me. <laughs> fuck you, pay I should have worn those barrettes. I have those barrettes and I gave you a set. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But yes, that's what comes to mind. It's, you know, pay me for my time, pay me mm -hmm. for my talent, mm -hmm. pay me for my intellectual property, mm -hmm. pay me. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So I wanted you for this particular interview because I think that it's perfectly acceptable in our culture for men to be as ambitious as they want. Uh -huh. And they don't get any shit about it. Nope. Right? It's expected. It's like, oh, he's so ambitious. But if a woman is ambitious, mm -hmm. then... Um, women are judged for her for ambition like exactly. she's so greedy she's so who does she think she is all that mm -hmm. stuff exactly so she's a shopaholic she's a gold digger mm -hmm. she must not spend any time with her children mm -hmm. exactly she's like judged either her character is judged in general yes. her parenting skills are judged um have you ever been judged for your ambition all the time mm -hmm. and that's why i use the phrase fuck you liberally <laughs> What do you do when you experience judgment as yeah. a woman for being ambitious? Well, you know what? What I what I like to do more often than not is be loud about it mm -hmm. and acknowledge it and talk about it publicly. Because right. I think it's important for people to know that like women are allowed to be ambitious. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I tell people all the time. I've said this to journalists that I've <laughs> had interviews with and stuff that like, you know, they're like, well, how much is enough? You know, if mm -hmm. you're, you have a seven figure business, why do you need to get to eight figures? Do you're just growing for growing sake? I'm mm -hmm. like, no, no, no. I'm a black woman. I will never be done. I will always be making more, right? Like, cause I need to take care of myself and then my family and then my greater community, right? Mm -hmm. So like, I will never be done making money until I'm dead. Right. <laughs> That's when I'll be done. <laughs> You know, and I will use those resources. And then resources. you still won't be done because <laughs> your legacy will still be making Hello, money. Hello, thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's exactly the point. Right. And then that, the, those funds can be used to make the world a better place, which is the whole goal. Right. I was going to ask that too. Um, generating wealth for wealth's sake, I know, isn't what you're about. And so. No, but at the same time, like, if I want some fancy ass shoes or I want a big ass house, like, I'm going to do that. Exactly. If I want to be covered from head to toe in Chanel then that is my right and I don't have to go volunteer somewhere to like make it okay. Right. You know? 
Because that's Shall what, that's the bullshit. Shall we introduce my self-love earrings? Exactly. Like Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this is why we love each other. Exactly. No, because that's not the only reason. That's not but. the only reason, but one of many. Yeah. <laughs> Because, like, you know, they put these rules in place, like, no, you have to be altruistic as a woman. Mm-hmm. You have to be caretaker for the world, right? Mm-hmm. Take care of everyone. And, you know, like, there's something wrong with wanting nice things. But men never have to worry about that. Have all the nice watches and the private jet and the nice suits, and that's fine. That's showing your prowess. Right, right. Right? But if it's a woman, it's discouraged. And I'm right. like, no, fuck that. I'm not going to do that. And, you know, sometimes people come at me because I talk about when I have a lot of success, I share it publicly because I think representation matters. Yep. And I think women need to see other women being unapologetically successful. Yep. I mean, I I think black people need to see a black woman being unapologetically successful. And I don't care if some people don't like it. Don't like it then. Right. Stay broke. Exactly. (laughs) I need more haters. So feel free to hate on me, like Cat Williams says. I'm collecting. It's summertime. I need more haters, okay? <laughs> it's summertime. <laughs> Wait, that I'm putting on a t-shirt. It's summertime. I need more haters. <laughs> what? <laughs> Seasonal haters. <laughs> this is like the best. <laughs> it's summertime. <laughs> and I need more haters. <laughs> so... Speaking of which, you wrote a piece called Black Wealth Matters. Mm -hmm. I want you to speak on that because I think that's super important. Yeah. Um, People don't realize that there's a huge difference between the average wealth of white families in America versus the average wealth of black families in America. You Mm -hmm. know, like people say to us all the time, oh, just, you know, get over slavery. And it's like, no, 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 no. That legacy continues to affect us today. That's why we're hollering about it and we'll continue to, you know. So for the average white family, their net worth is 181000 Right. And for the average black family, it's uh, 18000 That's mm-hmm. a huge, huge difference. Right. And for most, uh, you know, black people, even when they go to college and make six figures, they don't have parents who are paying their college debt, right? right. Like, or paying for them to go to school. So they have that debt. They're the only person in their family oftentimes who are doing really well. So if there is an emergency or other family members need something, they've got to take care of them, right? right. And so there are, there's all kinds of research that shows that even, high, you know, because they say like, oh, pull yourself up by your bootstraps or get, get educated. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're doing that. And that's not solving the problem, right? right? Like we need to make a bigger difference. Right. Um, and there's just a history of redlining mm-hmm. where black people couldn't own homes. Mm-hmm. And that's how you build wealth in this country, right? right. You get an education. Right. Um, and hopefully don't get saddled with six figures in debt when, while you do it. Right. And then you buy a home. And for a lot of black people, that is a real big challenge because of the legacy of slavery and all of these other laws that were passed that were biased. Right. Um, and racist. So that's why I talk about it. And that's why, you know, when I make a lot of money, I'm constantly talking about it and sharing it. And I'm really public about how much I make because I want people to see that it's possible. Totally. I know? mean, I talk about if you can't see it, you can't be it. Exactly. And it's so important for black women, especially, yes. to see you making the money that you make so yeah. that they can think it's possible for them, too. Yeah. And I want I want everyone you know, to know that they should be participating and helping black people build wealth. Right. And you can do that by like, if you're a small business owner, hire black people, right? Right. Have black employees, use black vendors, right? Like um, if you're giving gifts to your clients, find a black owned company to source those gifts from. Like how can you transfer some of the, you know, uh, wealth and money in your business to the black community? Like put dollars in their pocket is what what I'm talking about. Right. How can you do that? Right. And as business owners, you know, we have influences. We have a platform. Use that platform to highlight black people. You totally. know, like there's all kinds of ways that we can contribute to them being more noticed and them being able to make more money, referring business to them, you know, all kinds of things like that. So I really want everyone to participate and realize, like, this is not a problem that the black community created. Right. You know what I mean? So everyone should be participating and helping to solve it because honestly, it's such an enormous problem that if if everyone doesn't participate, it won't be solved. Right. And I think it's it's really opened my eyes to look at all the way all the places I spend money. Mm-hmm. And it, so it's not just about 
you know, hiring a diversity and inclusion specialist. Right. Who's black. Yes. It's like, who do I buy clothes from? Yes. What com- What are those companies like? Yes. You know, where do I buy, you know, there's, um, I'm creating a bold girl magazine yeah. and I'm making a point to highlight there are these two twin black girls called Twiminade. <laughs> lemonade. <laughs> and it's like, uh, where are you buying your lemonade? Yes. Where are you buying? I mean, every purchase that you make. Can, exactly. Can you look at buying from black people, people of color? Right. And the reason we have to do that is because, you know, when you go to look to hire somebody, they're not as noticed. You know why? Because they don't have the ad budget necessarily right. that right. Um, some of their white counterparts or competitors will have. Right? right. A lot of times our businesses are not as visible. Right. And that's why it's important for us to make room on our platforms. Right. Totally. <laughs> so imagine a woman watching right now. Yes. And she's thinking, that's great for Rachel Rogers. Mm-hmm. She is an attorney. She's beautiful. Um, she's got that it factor that I don't have. Mm-hmm. What would you say to her? Nonsense. <laughs> I, well, you know, we all have an it factor, right? Okay. It just, like, yours is different than mine, you know, and for every other woman out there, you have an it factor too. Mm-hmm. So figure out what that is, right? And decide that you're worthy. I think that's a really important piece of it, mm-hmm. right? Decide that you are and start asking for more money, asking to be paid, because we just allow all kinds of nonsense. Right. I think what we need is really boundaries around our work and around what we'll do for free. Right. We do all kinds of domestic labor for free. We do all of these pick pick my brains for free. No, uh-uh. No more picking the fucking brain. No more picking your brain no. for free. No. You can say, you know what? I would love to do that. It's a thousand dollars. Here's the invoice. After you pay, we can schedule. Right. <laughs> That's how this works. Right. You know. Um, and so decide that you're worthy, really take stock of your skills and your strengths and what you're great at and figure out how you can make money from that, Mm -hmm. you know, and it can be as simple as like promoting things on your Instagram, right. Or, you know, charging for your services, double your prices, go ask for a raise, negotiate for more money. A lot of women don't even negotiate, right? There's actually a study that found that small business owners who are women will lower their prices before a customer even asks. Wow. So like, you know, it's time to tell their price to a new potential client and they'll, they'll say, you know, it's usually 10,000, but I'll make it 7,500. And it's like the, they're, you're negotiating against yourself. <laughs> Let's not right. do that. It's usually 10,000, but for you it's 12, five. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because you did, you made me talk to you on a Saturday. <laughs> it's 12, five. <laughs> exactly. And I think a big part of how we change that behavior is community. Yeah. You know, and that's what you and I do, right? right. Create communities of women and talk to them about, here's how much we're making. Here's how much you should be charging for something like that. Here, I don't do this for less than X, Y, Z price, right? right? And if you get around that kind of group of people, all of a sudden, everybody gets lifted up, yeah. you know? I think it's hard to do when you're on your own, but if you surround yourself with other badass women, it gets easier. Like you. <laughs> I love being surrounded by you. And same. Make my life better. Yes, you do the same. And in that spirit, I have... A special prize for you. Yay! (laughs) I'm so excited. I know you know what it is. I I would like to crown you Queen of North Carolina. No, what you're (laughs) Queenly behavior. Queen millionaire. Awarded. Queen millionaire. (laughs) I love my crown. It's only appropriate. Will you promise to wear it naked around the house? I absolutely will. When the children aren't home? I do promise. Okay. was so fun. (laughs) So earlier in this episode, you heard all about my trek back to the Red Lion Inn. So what's your Red Lion? What's that thing you want, but feel like you can't have it right now? That thing that feels out of reach. Maybe your Red Lion is buying your first home or investing in your education. Or maybe it's something that has nothing to do with money. I want you to know three things. Number one, whatever it is, you can have it. Number two, it might take you three weeks to get there or three years or 20 years, but you can get there. And number three, it might actually be closer than you think. Success is all about doing simple things daily and consistently. 
So keep working the simple moves over and over. Keep studying, keep writing, keep contacting potential clients, keep selling your services, keep doing the work, keep pedaling, keep climbing. And one day you'll look up and realize, damn, I can't believe how far I've traveled. Look at me then and look at me now. Let yourself be ambitious. Let yourself reach for more. Put in the work and you can have it. This has been Go Time TV. I hope this episode has inspired you to be as ambitious as you want to be. There are going to be small-minded people who don't celebrate your ambition, who try to convince you to shrink and be smaller. And I want you to say, fuck that, and let your ambition be as big as you want it to be. Ambition with no limit. If this show brought you some positivity into your day, click the thumbs up below, do it, thank you, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'm Susan Hyatt saying bye until next time. And remember, you only get one life. Make it big, make it bold, and make it count. It's go time.